because he knows my work and he knows what I stand for. And I said, how can I let him down? <laughs> so first, come here, son. And this is my other son. I love him to death. And I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to have all of this support here because of their loss, my loss of them. But really what I want to do is share my personal story and speak to the powers of your mentorship. I wasn't always in this light. I am a transplant. I am not from Oakland. I fled from the city that I was from to avoid bullets. My name is Brother Blue. I was born Brian and I became Crip Blue because of what the same thing Brother Fab had said, the love that some older brothers had showed me that was missing from my life. 20 years ago, I would have been on the other end of the gun from this victim here. And I'm sure somewhere in that line, I'll cause some pain to many families. And I'm not happy about that. And it was one, maybe two good brothers that was in my community who saw me. And they said, I want you to come here and I want you to do this with me. Those two people changed my entire dynamic, my entire mental frame. It was a revolution of the mind at its best. And I can honestly say I would not be here if it wasn't for those two brothers. So where will you find me now? Not too many places. I'm in the back streets. I'm trying to holler at all the little homies I can. I buried another one of my students not too long ago and saw this good brother preaching at his funeral. I see some other people just in the community in, in doing the works. And if it wasn't for those few people, I wouldn't have went to Laney College and see Mr. Fab when he was still a rookie at the freestyle battles. I was a part of that organization. And that was because more people pulled me to the side and said, Blue, we like you. Come here. When I didn't know where my way was, I was completely lost. So for all of us that's here, especially those of us who do the work, yeah, there's many systems and many dynamics that we can all invest in, like Brother Terha said. My personal solution is this. And I'm asking that everybody kind of take part in that. Because we all see people who need support in communities. Pull those little homies to the side. Get them sisters in line. Ask them why they doing what they doing. Get their phone numbers. For those of us who's doing yoga and art and all that stuff, pull them to the side and ask them if they want to be a part. And if they don't, catch them the next time and ask them again. Bug them. Brothers who got game will be housing these sisters. Use that same game to holler at these young brothers and these young sisters and get them in line. Otherwise, what you doing? Now check this out. I've been in Oakland now for like 15 years. And because of my administrative ship and things that I have to do just to keep the organization afloat, some people might not like a brother. But I don't care. I got hundreds of youths. I got thousands of youth out here who will get in line for Brother Blue because I showed them the love that somebody showed me. And I feel confident at night that those brothers is all right. I'm saddened every time I see this. It don't have to be that way. So I'm just asking, let me humble my tone. Please, find two, find five, find ten, as many as you can muster. Make some oatmeal in the morning. Give them a bowl on their way to school. Get an extra $30, that little brother with some holes in his shoes, to surprise him one day like, I got you. Come with me, let's go, let's go get something. For you, just because you're alive and I like you. Just try it. So I'm hoping next time I see any of you, you'll have some little youth with you, no matter how tall or short, no matter what race or decree, somebody that needs your love and your support. And I hope that you're willing to give it to them. Peace.